Good afternoon. Today I'm going to go on with the reading of the mystery of the conjunctio, a chemical image of individuation by Dr. Edward F. Edinger. Today's task is to read about picture number nine, which you see over my right shoulder here. <clears throat> picture nine. Reunion of soul and body. Here the same setup prevails. The dead united body on the slab, the cold, the, I'm sorry, the cloud up above, and now the homunculus is returning. That's that little baby figure up there in the cloud. The idea would be that it's safe to go back to the body because it's been purified. And then down at the bottom, we have these two birds, one standing on the ground and the other one up to its neck in the ground. Jung, de, Jung suggests that the two birds represent a fledged one and an un. Jung suggests that the two birds represent a fledged one and an unfledged one. I would think of it as a lower version of the same event that's going on above. The one bird is looking at the buried very the one bird is looking at the buried one very much the way the descending humunculus is looking at the dead body. So I would say that the buried bird corresponds to the dead body and is on the way to being born out of its buried state, much as the dead body is about to be resurrected. This is a picture of the second stage of the conjunctio, <clears throat> as I spoke of it earlier. <clears throat> This is a picture of the second stage of the conjunctio, as I spoke of it earlier. The unio mentalis is now reuniting with the body from which it had been separated. Some of you may know the wonderful William Blake illustration of this event. Let me give you that. Jung tells us that the Rosarium text accompanying picture 9 quotes Morenus, a famous alchemist, as saying, Despise not the ash, for it is the diadem of thy heart. And Jung comments, This ash, the inert product of incineration, refers to the dead body, and the admonition establishes a curious connection between body and heart which at that time was regarded as the real seat of the soul. The diadem refers, of course, to the supremely kingly ornament. The coronation, the coronation picture that illustrates this text proves that the resuscitation of the purified corpse is at the same time a glorification, since the process is likened to the crowning of the virgin. show you the crowning of the virgin. Yeah, there she is. <clears throat> In the Rosarium, the picture that accompanies our picture nine as a kind of parallel is the coronation of the Virgin Mary. That was a very common medieval image, and apparently the person who put the rosarium together thought that the crowning of the Virgin Mary was analogous to this picture. Now that parallel is not immediately obvious. It takes a little work to make the connection, just as 
just as you have to work on dream images. But when you do, it's very revealing because as the text tells us, you may have forgotten, I keep forgetting it myself. These pictures are describing chemical processes going on in the alchemical retort. I almost forgot that. But then the text reminds me because it says this dead body lying on the slab is the ash that had been subjected to calcinetatio had been subjected to calcinatio. Okay. It says this dead body lying on the slab is the ash that had been subjected to calcinatio. It had been killed and nothing is left but the dead inert stuff. It had been killed and nothing was left but the dead inert stuff that's lying at the bottom of the vessel. The end product of ash was quite interesting. So the end product of ash has quite interesting symbolic associations. It corresponds to what the alchemists call the white foliated earth, which corresponds to the purified earth the purified body. And in spite of the ordinary associations to ash as despair, grief, and emptiness, the other set of associations are those of supreme value. They represent the whole goal of earthly existence. For instance, recall the line just quoted, despise not the ashes, for they are the diadem of thy heart. Another text says, the white foliated earth is the crown of victory. And another, sow, sow your gold in white foliated earth. The ash then takes on the quality of the incorruptible, glorified body that has gone through the ordeal of the total process. And that's what and what's left is the supreme value. Similar symbolism shows up in certain Bible passages. For instance, Isaiah promises to give the mourners of Zion a, a crown for ashes the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise for the spirit of grief. We have in these references a prelude to the resurrection of the glorified incorruptible body We have in these images a prelude to the resurrection of the glorified incorruptible body, which comes in picture 10. And the return of the separated soul to the purified body is a coronation. The body is being invested with an emblem of its supreme worth and value by the return of the soul. That event is exactly the same symbolically as the ascension and coronation of Mary, who represents earth and materiality and body. So Mary represents the purified white earth on the same, in the same way that the ash at the bottom of the alchemical vessel does. Egohood is redeemed and glorified. Question, where is the soul while one is waiting from picture seven to nine, since the body isn't ready to receive it until picture nine? Does the soul, while we wait, go through the transformation inside a corpse? I don't know. I can't answer your question in those terms. You have to remember that these symbolic images cannot be approached too precisely. They are slippery. If you try to fix them too definitively, they slip right out of your hands. So you have to allow for a certain ambiguity. You should, you have to get used to that. Otherwise they must fly away. Let me put 
this other one back up here. Question, in clinical experience, isn't that again a mysterious period? And if that process does occur but doesn't present itself clearly in dreams, it would be hard to have some consciousness of what Jung's getting at. Yes, these are... Yes, these last five pictures are really quite mysterious, and my remarks about them should be taken very tentatively. Okay, so that is the end of picture nine, and I will now go offline for five to ten minutes while I set up picture ten so that I can share that with you.